Hello and welcome back for the episode of Collect Tech 6. Last episode I built this sequence for alloy smelter to make my most required materials at the moment, that is rogue iron, iron inver and stainless steel. So they can work on its own by later on. And today I promise you I'm gonna show you my modified version of Nets MC multi smelter and I also gonna do the other smelter that, that I'm gonna require that I'm going to be a steel maker. So let us go. As you can already see, it is already here, I already built it. That is no secret and you can check the video of he and Bear building their version. My version here is a little different. According to that's let me see. I, you, you would require 14 inputs of material to make every single available alloy most of the time. And they build it into a straight line, so it was 14 hoppers into a pipe all the way, so it's probably gonna end somewhere here, like my one here. But side two, instead of doing that, one single side, make it on both sides here. So I can only run a single cable into the back holding the hoppers. Also, another very noticeable difference is that I have the hoppers into a germanium item pipe into a huge brass item pipe. And you must be asking you, why make it more expensive? Because this way here is kind of better, but not that much better. Cause you see, normally, this is where the course is going to be. If you use a brass pipe that has a band width of a single, single item, like I use it into my It says bandwidth of one item per second. Like this one here. This means that when we have uh, many inputs. Uh, I should have been prepared better for this. Only like, like say this is one item, this is another one, this is another one, and most times most recipes are at the maximum four resources in, in, insert and I and I just need to dump it grab one, then another, then another and then another you see, they are right, but it was kind of slow because the item only allows one item at a time to pass same thing with here however, if I change this to a huge pipe that was like before and do the same thing here on item here another one here another one here and this here when I request an item they all arrive at the same time uh, this has some lumpies holding this in position. <laughs> I was in the wrong place. Let's go again. One here, not a here, not a here. And not here. This is two items, so if I don't satisfy it, it's not gonna output. All four arrive at the same time. If you use an item like, like this, instead, instead of the quad all the way around, the item to the pipe would block the other ones from arriving. That's what happened here. 
and you saw last time. But here this won't happen. All four eatings will arrive at the crucible at the same time. So there is less chance that they're gonna have any of the materials actually burn up. A simple liquid boil of an Eva. Storage. In the back we have the shut off of the crossable. Still need to adjust the temperature. See how much you're gonna require. And let's use a quartz as well to be efficient. And I'll just put it here a thermometer into the front to select the pouring temperature of the metal and we'll be kind of done here. So let's just see, see what he, to make here. According to him, we require at least three hoppers of one, two hoppers of two, one of three, two of four, one of five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Because some recipes require a higher amount. Even this one here, let's see. It has a five, one, two, and one. And some heavy as well. But I, I advocated that the, this part here is not necessary. And the reason why two force is because the Netherite is for gold and for that scrap. But the devocate that you, you only require this amount here into the front. Maybe an extra three and four. Because my point in to make this kind of setup here is that I don't need to actually make any mat. I just go here, fill the Storage with the, it, it requires. This will prevent the incomplete alloys from being made. And just go my merry way. So, don't need to think about it, how much I'm gonna make it. If, it if, 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 if it's going to be a perfect amount of, to make it alloy and not have any left over. While it is here, you still need to think on how much material you need to, to, to insert it because there is no way to prevent it. It will send the incomplete alloys on it. So, if you need to think on how much material you need, you can actually break it down of the recipes. Because let's let's pick one here. Or another one here. It will require five, one, two, and three. To make a five, we only two ones here, so we still have one left. So a four and a one here, we we'll make five. Put four there, one extra here, and you have five. You can do the same thing for almost every other alloy. Six. One, one, one. We have six here. A four and a two. Six. Done. Any micro look at this one here that require an eight, a nine, and a two to make it eighteen. Wait a minute. Eighteen do not fit into the crucible. The maximum of the crucible is sixteen ingots of worth of material. So this recipe here will not fit it entirely into the crucible. So just cut in half. Four, five, and one. Make five, just make it three and two. And we already have a four, so we have the alloy to be made. So you get my gist. You can break the bigger materials into lesser ones. Very rarely you're gonna have it using all three ones here and it requires something like a five or a six or anything that you can actually replicate here. But you can replicate a five and a six 
and a 7 and a 9 and even on those that require a good amount of material 6 can make it 4 and 2 7 is 3 and 4 this one here is, a, is one that he come by the number of the Almighty the thing you, you can actually make into the cross but again this surpasses the amount of the item a cross will come around out and even into other simple ones that I made like sign this this soldering alloy that will require 9 tins and 1 antimony dust if you require 9 materials you can make a block of it and use it as a simple one so anything that requires 9 materials like this obsidian, steel and obsidian 9 obsidian dust is actually 1 obsidian block so you don't need to actually make a 9 for it same thing here make a, a block of soul sand with 1 gold make solarium even the game sometimes tell you about it like here to make iron Sometimes it's gonna show you a block because it is nine. To make it very requiring a lot more than a simple block. So it's just a question of you to break it down. This one here he also surpass the amount of the crossbow can handle. But you still can make it because this is gonna melt it down before the alloy is made and So, if you want to actually make this, you can throw a, one block of uh, mineral sand and other five, and this three here, and you'll be, may, you'll be able to make it. So, if you're going to the math of uh, how much material, you can also do the math to break it down into smaller values, so you don't need to, be, to have uh, another set of uh, copies just for that. And to make the other ID, just use you one four and two twos and it'll be done and here we have the same setup as last time ten ingots ten long rods and this beauty just like the other one here signal to pour income down here make a pulse is going to activate one side or another of the modes the headstone torch to level to change if you're gonna make it ingots or levels long six cable going up to make the this headstone that, that is powering this blocky not power it to allow the hoppers to drop in item and so on so on so on so on so on let's pick some material here let's make some electron it's been a while since I made some some of it one silver and one, go one gold so silver go here gold go here I could win your request to be set up to one. That's the only problem. We can't see the crossbow itself, so I have to trust it is in there. It is branch correct, so there should be no problem of it. And just ah. it has no feel. I have not, I have not connected it to the system yet. Easy, but it's not uh, connected on here. Everything should be filled up. There is ethanol in there.
and go, go. Ah, I forgot to see the electron dot point. You're making time. Yeah, not very high. But this is not the very strong anyway. <laughs> Other thing uh, that the advocate is that it's not to make this to double setup here. It's just for the show that I'm going to have this to make the other setup I require. I advocate to make everything ingots and then have it a separated crossable just to make the ingots into the long rods if I require them. You don't need them that often to have the, ra the hassle of having it losing so much time here. And yes, I know, we're gonna be burning the, the thing twice instead of it up just once, but it's so minor. Having fuel to build to, to the burning box is not that difficult. You can use a solid with charcoal and chips or anything. So that is very, really, very reason to to that. And when you make, and when you have stuff to make the rods or gears that it require, it's easy to also make it other ones that are worrying. And time is really seeing it being turned into ingots. And that goes. And now go for the other ones. Something is not right. I was a little confused why it made it two batches of the electron at the first time. It's probably because I I set up this, this one here, and when I was adjusting the temperature, it ticked again. So it is working as expected. And just to show that it works, I'm gonna make you some long rods, even though I don't believe they, there is any use for long rods of electro. I don't think I need long rods for anything. Or do I? Oh, flux heaters. The flux stuff. And I don't know. Eh. Makes sense. Yeah, they don't need for longer rods. Just to show you that it it actually work. And now it should be heat up when they empty until until it got that to that temperature and shut off. When it, when it empty it heats up quite fast, but not that fast if I use just a normal inverse that for things one. Let's see, and... Not too much about the temperature set. So this is my take onto the smelter. Oosh. I cold sweated when the possibility of my running into the top of it and it was hot. I still have those set here so I don't, don't actually to need to break into a small formation if I ever need it. But this will not stay. As I just say I'm gonna make everything from ingot. And I also want to place here the auto setup that is for the steel maker. 
And I think that aside from the headstone circuit, setup here won't be that complicated that that, that require a fluid explanation, so it won't be as long as this little hunt and comparison, maybe. See you soon with the new still maker here. And now let's go for the last bit of it, that is the steel maker that is here. In the surface looks simple quotes. And we did the option to choose it between long rods and ingots. Then all you have to do is place the iron here or here and start to eat up. Then it's going to get hot. When it gets hot enough, gonna drop the iron on it and heat up again. And so we're gonna get mold. The engine is gonna inject the air on it to become a steel, be powered down, and the cycle repeat. Now I want the ingot. As you can see here, it's getting heat up. And the motor is here. But it is a heavy, being fitted by a diesel steel engine. But as you can see, because of the little ship here, it is blocked. And has some torch is blocking it. When it gets a hot knock, you see that the torch down there, you're gonna burn out it and allow the engine to work. There it goes, now it feeds anything until it becomes steel and then it will be turned into ingot. Nice and simple. Now you're probably already expecting a nightmarish thing down there. Well, I hope you do because it is. As you see here, it's a thermometer, but it is in percent, not into temperature. And here we have it. There's the main line getting down here and powering this block here. And in both sides of the block, we have comparators. Because with the percentage, the signal is going to get stronger and stronger as the process goes by, but on, but not into Greg Techy alloy. It is always maximum. But here into the vanilla one, it will be the signal. And then we have the torches here that is putting a strange signal to compare with the one for the main line and do the things. There is one here that is 12 is the shut off. It already happened. This one here is set it to 10 and it's the one that is starting and stopping the engine itself. And here we have one of 11. This is gonna call the pour of the metal and request a new item. And I have this setup here because I was missing just a, f a second with the diesel engine of steel to make it steel. And then I didn't want to put a invar one because it would be overkill too much. So I put some repeaters with the all four chicks and that is enough to actually make the, the steel from the air. And here the my pulse signal, as always, the torch is holding the modes and the cable going up to request new item. If you want to know the strength, currently it is 11, now 10, because it is getting cold. We can do the vanilla version like we do here, 
or you can do like I did here using this regular label torch phone blue power different from the other ones this only require headstone because you probably have your award wondered why not he made any Lacho, reset or toggle from blue power well the answer is very simple I have this timer here that I plan to use to turn it on and off my stuff here it requires this bluestone wire tiles and that require nicolite that I don't have a lot of There's only small ores, and the oil layer is this thing that I never actually saw or find. So I have no idea where to find it. So I need to get little bits from time to time, so I don't have enough to spare making timers and all the other stuff here. Counter, sequencer latches and everything but I can make this one here so let's pick one here this is signal of 10 depending on how you looking when you play try to place down I'm gonna change the, the, the direction now place here and click to set up the the strength this one is 11 so this one is 10 it's supposed to be 20, 16 points to increase one level, but uh, that's not the case most of the time. This is not to make 10, so I don't need this anymore. And this only is 12. Well, it's a bit more compact, but there's one here, unfortunately, still have to stay. I need that little delay before requesting the material, or oh, I don't make it still at time. <laughs> I can see I have two ingots here and a long steel rod, so this is working finally. Finally, as good. Let's grab more metal here. So it's here. It's still cooling down, but uh, let's put it, it up. Gonna request very soon the ingot. And here I have a weight meter to set to zero when when the crossbow is empty. Keep the engine from wasting fuel. So even though we are wasting half of the rotation powers here because of this, we don't we're not wasting so much. But all, when I can make the electric version, it's going to be practically the same. But as you remember, engine is heavy, loss 50%. So it's practically the same thing as if I was using one of those. Actually more, because you still have to convert the fuel into electricity, but to then convert it to work. This is my triad of uh, smelters. I have my iron maker, inver maker and stainless steel maker. Let will be later on hook up to my storage so I can, can just come here and flick it up to make more. 
a mood smelter following the design of a Nets MC. Design the modifier to be a little faster, even though I don't need it and only make iron. And I have it, I'm still making setup here with a lever that I can permanently shut off the diesel engine and use this to make rods and ingots from anything I desire. So I can toss my stainless steel here and make them into all into rods. So, oh, that's going to be it from this episode. My 3D of smelter is ready. So next time, it's time to start to focus into other parts of the workshop. Which ones? I still don't know, so I'll have to think about it. It has been very exhausting lately. So this is Ungod, thank you so much for watching.